Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Friday, December 1st, 2017 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is, I let passion guide my focus into my expansion. And wow, <laughs> wow, wow, the astro wow. So Friday, December 1st, and December is sure to be a very very interesting month. You know, it's interesting just looking ahead. You know, we're starting now. We're going to have this full moon on Sunday. But like for this next month of December, we actually begin January. January 1st, we have um, a full moon. So it's like, holy wow, these next 30 days have September, April, June, and November. <laughs> the next 31 days. I can never remember which month has how many days. The next 31 days are definitely sure to be, wow. <laughs> that's, that's the word. <sighs> okay, starting with today. Starting with the transits that we have going on today. Building into the full moon. We cannot forget that the full moon build is behind us all. The full moon build and the build into Mercury going retrograde. Mercury is going retrograde late, uh, late, late, late on uh, December 2nd or early in the morning, December 3rd, depending where you live. Um, so between these two, two things building, we already have some power players, but the Astro today is like, hold my tea. <laughs> Here we go. So the first thing that we have today, I feel like is going to be very supportive to our process. Um, we have... Venus moving into Sagittarius and I asked this question yesterday and I maintain that this will be very supportive for us to remember as we move through December. <laughs> what will it take to expand as love? And I love that I have this card today from the universe has your back. I choose to learn through love. That could be for Venus in Sagittarius. You know, Venus does represent love. Venus represents love, beauty, harmony, peace, justice. I love that it's coming in to help Saturn finish its process. I love that it's coming in to help Mercury move through its retrograde process. Venus is like, here, I will hold this love vibration. So no matter what you are going through <laughs> in these next 31 days, what will it take to expand as love? How can I choose to learn this lesson, whatever this may be, through love? How do I step up, show up in my truth as love? How do I review these truths, these beliefs, this knowledge from the place of love? And I love, I saw a thing the other day, and I really like this, I can't remember her last name, Irma K. Sawyer. She posted something, um, the difference between judgment and discernment. And discernment is like knowing something not for you without having to judge it or justify exactly why it's not for you. It's just that feeling, no, nope, not for me. And I don't have to go into all the reasons. I just, I just know. Sometimes we dip into that analysis and that analysis creates that judgment. This is a time to really just like Trust, trust that guidance. Let that passion, let your core, let your love, let your heart show you which direction to focus your energy into and realize that en that place where you're focusing that energy into, that energy will expand. So Venus and Sagittarius will be supportive of that. Venus and Sagittarius can also want to break down boundaries. <laughs> uh, it can be very flirtatious. It can be very fun. It could be party out of bounds, which, you know, is kind of nice for holiday season. Just, you know, take the spirit of discernment with you and really grasp onto that spirit of love as well because love is going to be what carries us through the crazy. Okay, so then we have Mars reaching the peak of the opposition with Uranus. Now, I didn't mention in the scope yesterday, although I wrote it down, we have to remember anytime we're dealing with Mars energy, we are dealing with strong fire. We are dealing with the potential for aggression. We are dealing with war energy, even Mars and Libra. Mars and Libra is trying to find the balance, is trying to find the harmony, but sometimes you get so thrown out of balance, thrown out of harmony, that the war rises up within you, the volcano rises up within you, and it spews. <laughs> so please realize that. Not to mention, it's being spurred on by Uranus, which is this electrical energy. Fire and electric, we know, can be very powerful together. These energies, as an opposition, you may feel a tug of war. And this tug of war may be coming from energies outside of you. 
Mars and Libra connects us to relationship. Relationship in and of ourselves, but relationship with others. Uranus and Aries wants us to be true to ourselves. And so this combination is <laughs> shaking the stuff up. It's shaking it up to be released. It's shaking it up to bring in the new. It's shaking it up to bring in a new sense of balance. It's shaking it up to liberate you. And you may find, oh, look at these cards. You may find there is stuff that needs to go in your life. What needs to be let go of? What are you holding on to that you don't even have a relationship with anymore? What are you holding on to that isn't serving you? What are you holding on to that's actually falling away from your life? Let it fall away so you can step into your authentic nature. That's what Uranus wants. We have to know though with this energy, you know, do your own work. <laughs> Apply it to yourself. That's the most important thing. But realize there's going to be a lot of people out there who just feel the electrical and fiery vibrations of this and don't know what to do with it and aren't doing their work. <laughs> so discernment, steer clear, <laughs> you know, really listen to yourself in and through these energies and just realize that the full moon building is just going to serve to amplify this. But this does feel very powerful. And if you have a chance to let go, by all means, please let go. I also have the past lives card with this. And this to me is like, yeah, this is some really old stuff that is coming up to be released so that you can be born anew in your authentic, innocent, beautiful, pure vibration. So tune into that. So then, <laughs> then we have the moon hanging out in Taurus and this moon in Taurus is activating uh, is really preparing us and activating the full moon energy which is coming in. The moon in Taurus is connecting to Jupiter in Scorpio. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Jupiter in Libra because it was so long of that. Jupiter in Scorpio, 11 degrees, and it's connecting to Neptune in Pisces, 11 degrees. The full moon on Sunday is at 11 degrees. Now what's interesting is that we have Jupiter and the moon in Taurus, and these energies are in fixed signs. So there is some there is some stuckness going on. And this is kind of activating that. 11 degrees though is the master. Where you are stuck is a call for where you actually do need to let go. It's probably a call for where you are actually holding on to some old conditioning, some old shoulds, some old shoulda, coulda, wouldas, you know, that kind of thing. We have to realize though that this, this full moon coming in um, and the Neptune energy in this as well, it is mutable. It is changeable. There is a lot of change going on at this time. You have to let to let yourself be free. You have to let the change in. And this is part of the lesson of mastery. The lesson of mastery is like we're always evolving. We're always shifting. Nothing is ever really stagnant. And so if you're feeling that fixed energy, that stuck energy that <laughs> I've put my claws in and I'm holding on, this is a call to begin to see if you can release that, if you can love yourself enough to release it, if you can honor the worth of yourself enough to release these things. Jupiter and Scorpio may dig up some dregs. It could be really, really old. May dig up some of these dregs that show you, oh, this is why I'm holding on. These are my old fears. It is time to begin to master this fear and and shift, step into my power. Neptune will serve and help with that because Neptune will bring the flow. And I think this full moon will also help to shake it up. The Gemini, that mutable energy, the sun in Sagittarius, moon in Gemini, connecting to Neptune and connecting into that uh, Jupiter Scorpio energy. I feel like all of that change is going to help you, help you shift help you let go, help you choose to learn through love instead of choosing to learn by, you know, clamping in, holding on. But you really do have to be vigilant about this and just remind yourself of the constant process of evolution and the constant process of letting your passion help you focus and move in the direction that you actually do want to expand into. Finally, the moon will connect to Pluto. 
Uh, moon connecting to Pluto. That also just serves to bring the change. What are you being asked to show up for and change in your physical life? Moon in Taurus and uh, Pluto in Capricorn, Earth energies. So it's like, where are you being called to shift, make changes in your physical to help release you from these old patterns? This month feels like it's such an amazing time of releasing from old patterns. And that to me is why it's like so moment to moment to moment because who you are in this moment right now is not who you're going to be tomorrow as you have let go of these energies, these vibrations, all these things that you've been holding on to. Who you are now is not who you will be. Now, the final thing that I'm like, holy moly, we have Mercury reaching 29 degrees Sagittarius. You're going to have to be on your toes when it comes to your beliefs. You're going to have to be on to your toes when it comes to your knowledge. That Mercury at 29 degrees is also connected to Lilith, which is oscillating. Lilith is hanging out with Mercury and with Saturn at 27 degrees at the point that I was looking at the chart. I had her right there, though, in the middle, like being this boundary, being this being this uh, connector to these energies, you are being required to show up in your truth. And I really do think that this is going to be the requirement for the remainder of Saturn and Sagittarius. What is your truth? And then realizing moment to moment to moment, this truth, there's like this core soul truth in you. And yet in our human experience, the human experience truth it is going to change as we evolve, as we expand, as we grow. Keep digging in to find that soul truth and yet keep shedding. Keep shedding those places, that conditioning where you have been stuck in it. And again, realize that everybody's going through some level of this. Everybody's feeling these energies, but not everybody is so connected that they exactly know what's going on. So you may hit a lot of stubbornness and you may hit a lot of... Um, well, that's not true. Like, you need to believe what I'm going to believe. You know, fire energy. People's rage may come out. I always say with Mercury at 29 degrees, uh, the three gates, is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? And then I also like to ask, you know, when it comes to truth, when it comes to these things, is it for me to know or is it for me to, you know, share with this other person? A lot of times, the other person's not necessarily ready for the share. So just... Be aware of that and carry that vibration within you and, and know, like, the truth can defend itself, you know? Like, the truth will come out ultimately, but you have to just stand in your truth and act accordingly. Is that it for that? I think that's it for that astro. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Building into this full moon. Wow. All right. I love my cards from The Universe Has Your Back. I choose to learn through love. Attack, pain, fear, judgment, and any form of separation are merely calls for help. Remember this in and through this energy. It's intense. It's big energy. This is this is stuff. This is some stuff for sure. But I really like how uh, wise traveler, sacred traveler has our back. The wise leader came out again. You're a beacon for others. Be a leader. Be a leader of your own life. Be a leader for your own soul truth. Um... But I love this card that also came out. Ascending the mountain. Keep going forward. The journey may be hard right now, but a great view awaits you. You most certainly can achieve your goal. However, you must continue forward through hard work and diligence. Do not give up. Even if it seems hard, keep going forward. Even if it sometimes seems that you're going up three steps and falling back two, you're still getting closer to your goal. Sometimes you may need to take smaller steps, but do not stop. Every step takes you closer to the peak of the mountain. And when you arrive, the view will be spectacular. It will be worth all your heart and effort. I think of that as, you know, some good uh, advice for December. Because, whoo, <laughs> this month, this month, this is finishing. We, let's finish off 2017 strong. I, you know, every year people are like, okay, it's a new year. It's going to be better. 2018 is going to have its own intensity, but let's finish this year strong. What have you learned? How have you grown? Honor yourself for that. And yet honor this next trek of this hike, this upward hike that we're going through. Honor your participation in that because you chose to come at this time. This is not an easy time to be in, but to bring your A-game to this time, to bring your best, to be a beacon, to be a light, to be a leader, that's an amazing thing. Pat yourself on the back for that, you know? Honor yourself for that. And then 
keep going, step up, shake it off, <laughs> work it. All right, so that being said, you can always book readings at GaiaBlooming.com with me. You have one more day to join me and Nikki for our GPS workshop in LA. If you've been on the fence, I suggest you come because we are bringing our A-games to that for sure. Um, yeah, so the better it gets, <laughs> the better it gets. There is enough love in the world for you, and I will see you tomorrow. Namaste.